Assalamu alaikum Dear students Hope you all are fine I am Dr. Maham Siddiq Department of Botany University of Education Faisalabad campus Working as a co-teacher in subject of Plant Systematics Anatomy and Development The course code is BOTN 1112 Today we will discuss structure and development of stem contents we will discuss in this lecture are structure of stem epidermis cortical tissues vascular tissues structure of dicot stem structure of monocot stem and difference between dicot and monocot stem first of all what is stem stem is the main body or stalk of a plant or shrub typically rising above the ground but occasionally subterranean differentiated into nodes and internodes and leaves are inserted on the nodes stem has three types of tissue systems one is epidermal or dermal tissues second is ground tissues the third one is vascular tissues this diagram of a stem shows different physio uh, morphological aspects of stem in this diagram you can see the in the above portion the terminal bud terminal bud is a primary growing point of the plant terminal bud is a primary growing point next you can see axillary bud it is the embryonic shoot located in the axil of leaf from axillary bud you can see leaf scar leaf scar is a mark left by a leaf after it fall then you can see node and internode this is not and this is internode and at the bottom you can see another leaf scar the below portion show growth of 2 years ago yani means 3 years old stem the middle part 2 years old stem and the top part of the stem indicated 1 year old stem the side branch one year old side branch formed from axillary bud near shoot apex and uh, here two uh, leaf scars left by terminal bud scales or previous winters of previous winters next is epidermis epidermis in the field of botany it is the outermost protoderm derived layer of cells covering the stem root leaf fruit flower and seed parts of the plant epidermis have waxy cuticle provide a protective barrier against mechanical injury water loss and infection epidermis of the stem consist of a single layer of cell walls of these cells are cutinized stomata are rare in the epidermis of the stem the cells of the epidermis are living they are without chloroplast they show meristematic activity the meristematic activity increases the surface area of the epidermis during primary growth and the secondary growth next is cortex 
cortex is cortex is composed of following types of tissue parenchyma cell parenchyma sclerenchyma and endoderma parenchyma cells most part of the cortex of the stem consists of parenchyma cells these cells often contain chloroplast especially in the young herbaceous plant colenchyma the outer part of the cortex contain colenchyma cells they may form a continuous layer or they may be grouped into strands number 3 sclerenchyma in certain plants sclerenchymatous tissues are found in place of colenchyma they are present in the peripheral layer of the cortex they act as a primary supporting tissue endodermis it is the innermost layer of the cortex it is not well differentiated in the conifers and angiosperm but endosperm endodermis is differentiable in the stems of lower vascular plants in these plants endodermis has the parent stem in some plants star sheets act as endodermal layer this diagram indicated the internal structure of the stem this is the internal structure of the stem uh, uh, outside the epidermis the outermost layer then these layers these layers are indicated the cortex in which parenchyma colenchyma sclerenchyma and endodermis are present then vascular tissues are present vascular tissues consist of xylem and phloem blue uh, color indicated the phloem and red or pinkish color indicated the xylem the central part is called pith in between the xylem and phloem strands cambium is present in other side also the uh, structure of stem in the other orientation with same labeling next is the pith pith is the central part of the ground tissue of stem it is encircled by the ring of vascular tissue it is composed of parenchyma cells these cells are large size in the center and gradually become smaller towards the periphery intercellular spaces are common in the central part but the cells are more compactly arranged in the outer region cells in the central part are often destroyed during growth it makes the internodes hollow some cells of the pith are filled with tannin and other substances the strips of ground tissue between the adjacent vascular bundles are called medullary rays or pith rays medullary rays connect the pith with cortex this diagram indicated the pith and its orientation you can see the central portion is the pith in which central cells are larger in size and peripheral cells are smaller in size and you can see xylem phloem sclerenchyma vascular cambium cor cambium epidermis cor all are labeled there but here we we only focus on the pith of the stem vascular bundles the strands or vascular tissues forming hollow cylinder called vascular bundles vascular bundles are arranged in rings the vascular bundles are often present close together to form a continuous ring of vascular tissue so vascular bundles have three types of arrangement radial conjoint and concentric radial 
xylem and phloem patches are separate and present on alternate radii in conjoint xylem and phloem patches are present on the same radius and lie side by side concentric one tissue is surrounded by the other conjoint vascular bundle further divided into collateral and bicollateral concentric is further divided into amphicerebral and amphivessel vascular bundles this is the flow flow chart of vascular bundles radial radial conjoint and concentric radial as we defined before xylem and phloem are on different radii xylem and phloem patches are on different radii they are in equal number they are alternately arranged this type of vascular bundle is always closed because cambium is absent next is conjoint vascular bundle conjoint vascular bundle xylem and phloem lie side by side on the same radius they lie side by side there are two types of conjoint vascular bundles collateral and bicollateral collateral one xylem and phloem lie side by side bicollateral two patches of phloem on either side of the xylem next collateral further divided into two types open and closed open cambium present between xylem and phloem and in closed cambium is absent next is concentric one tissue is surrounded by the other tissue xylem and phloem are surrounded by one and other concentric vascular bundles further divided into empty vessel and empty cerebral empty vessel xylem is surrounded by the uh, m sorry empty cerebral xylem is surrounded by the phloem tissue it is always closed due to the absence of cambium uh, these are present in the uh, fruits and flowers of ferns and orchids empty vessel phloem is surrounded by the xylem it is always closed due to the absence of cambium it is present in the stem of yucca next is xylem xylem is originated from the procambium the characteristic is the end arch showing centrifugal mode of differentiation from the procambium the protoxylem element tracheates and the trachea with small cavities and annular and spiral thickening occur towards the center and the metal xylem element with pitted and other types of thickening are present towards the circumference xylem parenchyma cells are smaller than other parenchyma cells of the tree next is phloem a vascular tissue in land plant primarily responsible for the distribution of sugar and nutrients manufactured in the shoot phloem is composed of sieve tube companion cells and phloem parenchyma the cambium of the vascular bundle what is called fasciculus appear to be composed of two or three layers of fusiform cells this tissue is responsible for growth and thickness next is vascular cambium vascular cambium a narrow strip of meristematic cells is present between the xylem and the phloem in the vascular bundles of dicots and gymnosperms 
the shapes of mastematic cells is called vascular cambium the cambium become active at the start of scandic growth vascular bundle having cambium between xylem and phloem are called open type as we discussed before vascular cambium is not found in the vascular bundles of monopores this vascular bundle is called close type as we discussed before pericycle pericycle is the tissue of variable width is present between the innermost layer of the cortex and outer boundary of the vascular bundle but in most plants the cells of the pericycle just outside the phloem are modified into fibers these fibers are called perivascular fibers the pericycle in the region of medullary rays remains parenchymatic this diagram shows the all vascular cortical and epidermal tissues in cross section and in transverse section in this cross section epidermis is present outside it is a single layer thin wall cell then hypodermis then cortex and the innermost layer of the cortex is called endodermis then pericycle is present phloem xylem and in between them cambium is present and at the center pith is present in transverse section their orientation is like this some epidermal cells have cuticle layer on it and if these are mucilaginous and trichomes are also present on the epiderm epidermal layer of the stem now we can see the structure of a dicot stem dicot stem has outermost layer called epidermal layer we can see here epidermal here and which can grow from the epidermis as we know that epidermis is a single layer outermost skin composed of tubular parenchyma cells which are compactly arranged without having intercellular spaces outer walls are cuticularized stomata may be present here and there are on the epidermis many multicellular hairy outgrowths are noticed inside the epidermis cortex is present in the extracellular ground tissue laying internal to epidermis cortex is differentiated into three zones hypodermis parenchyma and last one is endodermis hypodermis Hypodermis is composed of a few layer of parenchyma cells which thickened corners form a band just beneath the epidermis they are meant for mechanical support after hypodermis parenchyma cells are present next to parenchymatous hypodermis many layers of parenchyma cells with intercellular spaces are found they are often enclosed a number of glands in the last layer of the cortex it is one layered and as we discussed before barrel shaped endodermal cell layer is present forming a wavy band as we can see in this section they are telemitin the central cylinder or steel these cells contain abundant starch grain hence are also called starch sheet in the dicot stem then after uh, cortical tissue central cylinders or uh, steel is present 
it encloses many vascular bundles arranged in the form of disnic rings and the intracellular ground tissues first of all vascular bundles these are placed more towards the epidermis than towards the center bundles are collateral and open xylem with its component parts like vessels tracheids wood fibers parenchyma lies towards the center as we can see in the red color in the red color xylem is present protoxylem vessels with smaller cavities and annular or spiral thickenings are always placed towards the center and metaxylem vessels with wider cavities and reticulate scleriform or pitted thickening towards the epidermis as you can see in the vascular bundles the in this in transverse section we can see metaxylem and protoxylem the arrangement is called endarch flowing with sieve tube companion cells phloem parenchyma lies outside or towards the circumference a strip of lateral meristem called cambium is present between xylem and phloem the green part is shown the cambium uh, in transverse section this green part show the cambium next interstellar ground tissues differentiate into three zones that is pericycle pith or medullary ray pericycle uh, this part pericycle uh, in transverse section this uh, pink color cells are shown uh, pericycle region next to the endodermis many layered regions called pericycle laying outside the bundles pericycle in the stem is made up of two types of cells pith or medulla or medullary ray pith it is the largest central portion of stem occupied by thin walled colorless parenchyma cells with a lot of intercellular spaces you can see in this part colorless medullary ray parenchyma cells present in between the two vascular bundles two vascular bundles look like rays radiating from the pith they are called medullary rays next is structure of monocot stem you can see the arrangement of vascular bundle is different in monocot uh, uh, stem and dicot stem in dicot stem the vascular bundles are arranged in uh, in a ring like fashion and in uh, monocot stem they are scattered and not uh, no central pith is located in this diagram um epidermis outermost layer then ground tissues consist of hypodermis next to the epidermis three layers of sclerenchyma form hypodermis ground tissues internal to hypodermis are all parenchymatous in nature showing primary body no differentiated cortex star sheet is present in monocot as we discussed before in dicot these are simply called ground tissues next is vascular bundles are numerous and scattered in the ground tissues the vascular are vascular bundles are scattered more crowded towards the periphery more crowded towards the periphery than towards the center the bundles are collateral closed that is why monocotyledonous usually do not grow in thickness xylem has the usual element two metaxylem vessels lie outward and two protoxylem vessels towards the center this arrangement is more or less like letter y pith pith is undifferentiated in monocotyledon stem and highly developed steel is present next is difference between monocot and dicot stem stem is solid in most of the cases in monocot 
and being uh, usually hollow in the dicot stem hypodermis formed collenchyma fibers green in color made of sclerenchyma fibers not green in color then internal tissues arranged in concentric layers in monocot stem internal tissues arranged in concentric layers while in dicot stem no concentric arrangement of tissues uh, can seen ground tissues in monocot stem differentiated as endodermis cortex pericycle medullary pith but in dicot stem same and is composed of a mass of similar cells next is vascular bundles formed as broken rings in monocot stem but in dicot stem scattered irregularly around the ground tissue next is phloem parenchyma phloem parenchyma is present in monocot stem but absent in dicot stem next is pith pith is very well developed in monocot stem but it is not as well developed in dicot stem as in monocot stem epidermal hair may or may not exist in monocot stem but epidermal hairs are present on dicot stem vascular bundles are less in number and are uniform in size in monocot stem in dicot stem vascular bundles are numerous and different in size trichomes are absent in monocot stem but trichomes are present in dicot stem